Hello, hello, hello. Give me just a second. There we go, there's the button I needed. Hi, Rustic. If it's the news I just saw. But what are these, what is the excited, excited news? Hi. Hello, everybody. I am your neighborhood scrub panda today. I am a mess, my hair is a mess. Uh, I feel a way about how I look. There's not going to be a camera on very long today. If you hear crunching in the background, the puppy has a bully stick. Seeger has already finished his. It is how I had to get them to come in the house because they were trying to fight with the puppy in the backyard. I need to get more cinder blocks. Yay, because the puppy tried to get under the fence again. That's awesome, Rustic. Uh, I saw your comment that you're going to be able to participate and that you are having trouble finding the mini. Most local game stores will have it. Um... If you have a gaming goat near you, where you're at, because I don't know specifically where you're at in the area, the gaming goat should have them. They usually have a bunch. Not my favorite place to shop because the owners are kind of shitty. But, from what I understand, but it might be like, you might be able to get it. If you can't, miniaturemarket.com. If you place the order today, you should have it by Tuesday. Oh, wow, my camera's like all pointed up over my head in the wrong spot. Let me fix that. There, that should be better. Oop. So, yay! I'm excited you get to participate. Um, there is going to be a few ways to get the mini if it's sold out on Amazon. Definitely check miniaturemarket.com because that's where I picked up mine. Uh, they ship from relatively close. I think they're in like Ohio or something. The last time I ordered from them, I had my minis three days later. So try to get it there or look for a local game shop that might have it. Otherwise, just pick a mini. Find a local game store and just pick one. I don't have an extra one or I would run one over to you. <laughs> I've only got the two and I need them both for explaining this. Sorry, my camera got all fucked up last night. There we go. I moved stuff around so I could see the screen while I was modding last night. So hi everyone. Today is the day. I'm a little nervous, but we're going to be okay. Uh, I have the stuff out to unbox. I have the stuff out to uh, wash the minis. I have the stuff out to paint Molly. I have the stuff out to paint Molly. I feel a way. I'm going to get a Stream Raiders battle started for us real quick. So let me pull up the screen. We go into Raiders. Oh, actually, I'm going to hold off for a little bit and let some people get here first, because that's a boss battle. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can get some people in here first, and then we'll get going on the boss. How about that? Then we will, uh, we will worry about it at that point. I forgot we were sitting on a boss. <laughs> 
So hi everyone, welcome in. It is the day. Today is the technical first official day of Panda U Part 3. Uh, if you exclamation point Panda U, you will get the information about today and a link to my website that has further information of what to do, what you're going to need. Um, it it kind of gives you the painting guides, all of that. There is a link back from there to the original post with the supply guides. Um, if you do not have your stuff, you need to order it now. Or you need to go find what you need at a local dollar store or craft store this weekend. Um, you... <laughs> something like that, Netherlad. Um, this is a good time to go get the stuff locally if you can. Um, again, we're going to go over everything we're going to use for this project today. Um, I'm going to go over one of the PDFs with everybody so I can kind of show everybody how this is going to go. Um, and we're going to do all of the prep. We're going to unbox all the stuff. Uh, and then the second half of today, I will be working on painting Molly. And then we're going to raid D&D for Black Dice. But reminder, if you exclamation point BDS, you will get the link to the Black Dice Society YouTube. They would prefer you watch it there. Uh, if you have the means to do so, please watch it on YouTube and not on D&D. They really want to push people to the YouTube channel for that show. Uh, so please be sure to do that if you can. Otherwise, watch it on D&D. Um, we're just going to raid over there just in case there's another blip where YouTube doesn't pick up the stream the way that it's supposed to. Um, cause nine times out of 10, you're always going to be able to watch it on Twitch. They had one glitch a couple of weeks ago where we went to raid the YouTube and then the YouTube got stuck. So yeah, ground stripping was roughly like three days. The USPS ground or whatever it is, or the USPS sure post or UPS sure post or whatever that first main one is. They're close enough that I got it in like three or four days. Now, there's no guarantee on that. That's just been my experience with them. Um, but typically, whenever I order something from them, I get it much faster than expected. That was a loud crunch. Um, so yeah, let me get back into my mod chat so I have that pulled up where they're just going to troll me anyway. Oh, excuse me. Uh, today has been heckin' weird. Uh, poor Briar woke up it weird and a whole bunch of stuff that we needed to do got weird. And so now today's a mess. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, chaos is a thing. Um, I forgot to pour my tea. I have like a bottle of Lipton here that I brought my water bottle to pour it into and then forgot to pour it in a water bottle. So I have to pour myself a drink in a minute. Um, but I have all this stuff out. Uh, typically when you're cleaning your minis, you want to use room temperature or just a little warmer than room temperature water. You don't want to use super hot water. I got super hot water because obviously as a streamer, I have to go ahead of time. I don't have a sink in here. So I got super scalding hot water and I'm letting it cool down <laughs> as opposed to just getting the temperature that I need. Hi Seeger. Can you go lay down please? Thank you for smooching the bottom of my foot. I'm sitting like a goblin and my foot sticking out and he just walked in here, licked the bottom of my foot and walked away. My dogs are weird. That's the puppy walking around. I lied. That was Seeger. He came back around the side of my chair and flopped down under my chair so she can't lay under me because someone is jealous. It's all chaos. Hopefully everybody can see hear me better today. Uh, I figured out what the problem was. So yeah. Windows update, y'all. It reset my mic down to 50% instead of 100%. Like in, in the native settings in Windows, not, uh, what you call it, not um, in OBS. It did it in Windows, so everything got jacked. So I had to turn everything back up. So everything should be back to normal now. Um, music is going. Uh, I'm going to actually turn the music down in my headphones a little bit because it's kind of loud. Hi, Ripley. Hi, baby girl. Are you going to go lay down now? Are you going to torture your brother some more? Please stay out of my garbage. Please just go lay down and rest. 
she continues to push and play and she's like, I, I'm worried I'm going to have to like crate her, crate her to get her to heal because she's just 100 miles an hour all day. You don't hear the music? Hold, please. Is that any better? Okay. Turned it up a little bit. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. So, all right. Uh, let me double check. This is going to be the one time that I'm actually going to look at my stream info. Uh, wow, there's like nobody here yet. All right, we're going to hold off on stream readers for a little bit. We're going to let people come in. I know I'm going a little earlier than usual. Um, I just want to make sure that we're not going to start a boss battle and waste tokens and stuff if we're all like trying to get at it and then we fail horribly. Uh, so I'll get stream readers going here in about 10, 15 minutes. Um, yeah, it, I had it on, but it, my desktop audio was turned down a little bit. So I just turned it back up so everybody can hear it. Cause I have the music turned down a skosh. Um, cause it can get very loud. So we'll get going here in a little bit. Uh, pfft. why did I click it? Why did I click Discord? Why? Why did I click that button? Trolls, all of you. Okay. All right. Well, without further ado, let's get into uh, unboxing. Let's get into chit chatting. Uh, let's show off our our damaged circus tiefling. Zenithal primed and ready to go. I was real worried last night because I was having a problem getting all in here with the primer and I sprayed it and then I let it dry and I took a look at it and it looked like I oversprayed to a point that it lost some of the detail. But then when I did the Zenithal, it was like, okay, rad, we're good. Um, hey, Tuck, welcome in. So there is our circus tiefling, y'all. He's ready to go. I have all of his paints. We're going to be custom mixing a lot of colors for him. I had this out because, hey, look what I made show up, y'all. What color is this? I spent three hours fucking with my camera and my saturation to try to make purple show up. Because I'm painting a purple tiefling today and goddammit, purple will show on this camera. Uh, Zenithal is when you prime a mini completely black and then blast it with a little white in the direction that the light is coming from. So basically I primed the whole mini black, I sat him down, I grabbed my white primer and I you hold it about 12 to 15 inches away and give it one good just spritz. And now all of a sudden, and I know the, the light is blown out a little bit. I tried to fix that and it's not listening to me. Um, and basically it gives you a lighting direction. So when you're painting, as long as you're using nice thin coats of paint, um, when you're painting, it'll show th through just a little bit lighter and then the darker places will feel a little darker. And it's a really nice trick to um, create a directional lighting effect without having to create a directional lighting effect. It's kind of fun. I've been practicing with it a little bit. That doesn't sound good. Ripley, what are you in? Ripper. She just drank a whole bunch of water and I don't know where she's getting the water from. Hoping it's out of their bowls. Right, yeah, what Zero just said also helps if you're looking at getting into glazing, which I've never done before. I have no clue how to do it. It's something I'm very, very new to. I don't understand the concept quite yet. Oh, or contrast paints, which I do a lot of. Uh, not gonna be the toilet because the door is shut. I'm just making sure that she's not like up in the sink or something. I think she was just getting water out of her bowl. I think she just didn't finish it, which is good. That's fine. I just, she's a... Okay, yeah, no, I'd totally be down to learn that. So I would absolutely be watching that. Um, but, but today is about Panda U first. So I am going to stop goblin sitting because I actually have to reach to the floor and I can't do that while I have my legs tucked under my ass. So let me grab 
Ripley, will you leave your brother alone? Go lay down. I am going to grab the boxes. So Ripley already nudged this, so the plastic's coming off. So sorry for super satisfying for some and not satisfying for other plastic noises. I'm going to go ahead and unbox this. I'm going to show everybody what's in these kits. Um, again, for Panda U, because I recommended this kit, I am not going to use any of my special brushes. I'm not going to use any of my other stuff. I am quite... We are doing Stream Raiders Tuck right now. We are um, waiting for a few more people to come in because I am currently in single digits and it's a boss fight. So uh, I am going a little earlier than usual today. So I'm just going to let people have a chance to get here so we're not wasting keys. This dog just walked over here and laid on my air conditioning vent. Yeah, this is gonna be like the one time that I'm gonna look at my numbers is because I don't wanna like completely fail at Stream Raiders and have people wasting epics and stuff. Cause if we restart it, I can restart it from the beginning but nobody gets their ex epics back. Yeah, she's just made herself comfortable, and I think it's because Seeger's laying on the floor where she normally lays, because he's being a jealous asshole. So this is the Nolzer's Marvelous Brush Set. Uh, it comes with a base coat brush, a dry brush, and a fine detail brush. Um, these are going to be three out of the four brushes I will be using on this paint. Uh, I am actually going to be using this brush today when we prime. Um, I will say in a typical situation, once you have the money to start building up a stock of stuff, do not use your base coat or your mini brushes for your primer. Um, you can, but that's something that should be a temporary thing until you can either A, get spray primer or B, you can uh, get primer brushes. Um, just so that way you're not uh, mixing primer into your brushes too bad. Um, so this is the Monsters paint set. This is the biggest of the Nolzers sets that you can get from, um, what you got, from, uh, Army Painter. Uh, also with the Army Painter, I got the Adventurers paint set. The Adventurers paint set is really your core colors. It is your primer, your black, your white, a silver, um, green, pink, yellow, red, blue, um, and you can mix a ton of colors just from that. So this is a really good starter set. But for the owl bears, one, the mini comes in this set. And two, this comes with 36 different paints. There are 29 paints, three metallics, uh, three washes, and one special effect, which is the glistening blood. So you get all of these colors. Sorry, I know my ring light is blowing stuff out. So you get all of these colors in this kit. And then you get the Owlbear Mini. Um, this kit comes with 10 just regular paints. Well, I should say nine paints, eight paints, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight paints, a primer and a silver. It also comes with the Minx and Boo Mini. Um, and I believe this also comes with a paintbrush. It does, it comes with the starter brush. Um, so that all comes in these two sets. I'm gonna open up these packages, let everybody know kind of what they look like inside. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna move this camera up a bit so that we have a little bit more room to go into all of this. So give me one second. There we go. That'll give us a little more room to open these up, see what's in here, all of that fun stuff. Um, let me grab my X-Acto knife. And if anybody has any questions about what we're doing, what we're opening, uh, what stuff is used for, feel free to ask. Um, I will do my best to answer everybody as quickly as possible. Um, you know, today's another good day to ask questions more geared specifically about Panda U. Um, and then, because next week we're going to start painting. So I am getting this out. Sorry, and I'm really sorry if anybody has like, can't stand the plastic noises. I got to do what I got to do to get these open. Um, so this is what comes in the basic adventurer set, which is kind of their base set that you can get. Um, it comes with the information as to where you can get stuff online. It comes with, uh, how to like a mini as to how to paint Minx and Boo and the colors you need. This is the owlbear and the colors that you need from that. Um, and then uh, that's Drizzit there who I also have but my kid painted him um that comes with the underdark set oh thank you so much 
<laughs> I appreciate it, Catherine. Uh, so those are those. Um, there is another new set that just came out that they don't have advertisement out for. Um, this is the brush set that we're using. Um, so yeah, and there's a tutorial on how to paint the owlbear. The video is available on my website or you can go to YouTube for it. Um, also, there's a tutorial on how to paint minks and boo. So that, again, that mini comes with this. Uh, but you get like a little card like this. Um, I should probably put the cat back on my X-Acto knife because there's a puppy here. Uh, you get a product guide with all of their stuff. I mean, they have a lot. This is basically their full line of war paints. I will say that for the D&D sets, they have about 20 paints between the four sets that are unique and not replicated. Don't have a replica in the main paint shade range. Um, those all are available individually. Once you've bought these, you can just get the individual ones. Um, it's got, you know, instructions on what to do with your paintbrushes. It's got what to do to mix your colors and make sure that your paints are well mixed. Oh, thank you for the biddies, Tuck. I appreciate it. Um, oh, yay, lemur. Will you need to wash it if it's pre-primed? Sort of. Um, you don't necessarily have to, but like Zero said, a gentle cleanse is never a bad idea, and we're, I'm going to show everybody how to do that. Um, so yeah, it gives you instructions as to how to contact them if something is wrong. You've got your... This is the starter brush. It's a, this is actually a really good starter brush. Oh, thank you, Zero. Um, and then these are all the paints. This is the Minx and Boo Mini. I already have one and I'm going to paint both of them um, at some point. So this is just the mini that you get with this particular set. Um, and then you get all of your colors and all the paints are right here. Um, the paints we will be using for the Owlbears are going to be this primer, which I'm going to go ahead and take out of here. Going to be the gray primer, uh, the Bugbear Brown, and the abyssal black also the flump pink this one too uh, we'll be using those and the white there's a bunch of colors hello um so there you go um i have most of these already pulled out for myself because i have these paints um I missed a question. Uh, yeah, the starter brush is just that. It's a starter brush. It's basically, um, so this is the point on it. It is, you can load it up pretty well with paint. You can use it to paint an entire min mini and do detail work. Um, there's other specialized brushes, but this is a really good brush if you have like literally just one brush. This one will do the job if you need to. So, all right. So I'm going to keep the primer out because I don't think my bottle of primer is any good. Um, I'll show you guys why in a little bit. Uh, I don't need to keep the Abyssal Black out because I already have some. Um, I'm just going to, and then I have most of these colors out and ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this in its box for now until I need to replenish these paints. I have some that I'm running pretty low on, namely the black, but I went out and bought, before I knew I was going to be doing this for Panda U, I purchased a thing of the black the matte black so you know this is the color equivalent to the abyssal black is their matte black um they actually do on the army painter website they give you a one-to-one -one comparison of colors as to what is available um through their regular line and what the equivalent colors are and if it is a uh, and they let you know if it is an actually unique to um unique to the D&D &D line color. Like the rigid leather that I use so much of is unique to their D&D &D line. So if I need to purchase more, I actually have to order that specific paint from them. Hey, monster. So that's the Adventurer's Paint Set. We'll be using a few paints out of that. Um, and then this is the Monster's Paint Set. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and point out we are going to be using the Owlbear Brown. 
Uh, we are going to be using the Glistening Blood. This one, is, the Glistening Blood is optional. We'll be using Orc Skin and Lich Skin. Um, we'll be using possibly the Carbide Crimson, because that might actually be the red that we need. We'll be using uh, the Fair Skin, the Utyug Brown. Um, I can't remember. I think there's like one other one that we're going to be using, but I'll go over all of this with everybody here in just a minute. Um, so let me grab my X-Acto knife. We'll get this open. Um, I will show everybody what comes in this kit and I will remove the miniature because I will be using the miniature today. Um, as I get everything started on, um, there we go. cool. On like care and feeding of your mini basically. Yes, and you will absolutely, you can order stuff from uh, Panda Paints Minis and we will get it to you. So now this box got a little beat up in transit, but that shouldn't be too big of a problem. Everything inside should be fine because they are usually pretty good about taking care of this stuff. Oh, thank you so much for gifting that sub, Catherine. I appreciate it. So, okay, you get the same paperwork in here that you get in the other one. Um, you get two layers of paint though, as opposed to just one. Um, so this is the, this is the mini, no primer on it, just chilling. I'm going to set him aside because we are going to need him today. Um, important note when it comes to, oh, thank you so much for the, I didn't even see a hype train started. Thank you so much. Thank you for the biddies. Thank you all for the hype train. Um, so these are double stacked in here. Uh, these ones are just double layered. Um, with the army painter, it's usually pretty easy to tell stuff by their cap color. Black caps are always metallic. Red caps are always washes. Um, white cap are paints and specialty paints. Um, those ones can get a little mixed up. So it's important to know which ones are specialty paints and which ones aren't and make sure that you keep them separate so that you don't get confused. Um, but these are all the paints. This one is actually two layers of plastic. You pull this one out and there's another round of them right under there. So there you go. And that's what comes in the kit. That's, that's everything. It's everything here is more than enough to paint hundreds of minis. The difference between specialty and not specialty. Their specialty paints are um, things like Glistening Blood, which is a much shinier paint because it's supposed to look like wet blood or they have a rust effect paint. Um, it's mostly just for like effects. There's like a rust paint that will make metal look rusty. There's a slime paint that very much is a milky green color and looks like liquid slime when it dries. Uh, there's a mud color that will dry very matte and look very like muddy. I guess is the only real way to describe it. Um, so it'll tell you if it's an effects paint or a specialty paint, except for the glistening blood, because they didn't actually say that. Um, I had to go figure that out on my own. Um, but now that I know, I can share that information with everybody else and nobody makes the same mistakes I made. Um, again, these are the four brushes I will be working with. If you ordered this same set, it's gonna be the same brushes um, across the board for everyone okay i don't want to necessarily put that there uh, i'm just trying to stack stuff up and out of the way and away from the doggos because hey puppy ate a pencil this morning i'd really not like her to eat like one of my new paints <laughs> so there we go um let me go ahead and get the stuff i'm gonna go ahead and open these brushes so I can show everybody the brushes. Cause if you didn't order these and you're just using brushes from like Michael's or the Dollar Tree or something else, I'll show you kind of the, the tips that you're looking for in brushes. That way you guys can get out the right tools. Um, especially Rustic, if you were just gifted a bunch of mini paints like brushes and stuff, you'll know which brushes to look for. Um, so these are the starter brush, the fine detail brush, the base coat brush and the dry brush. So the dry brush is a kind of flared, very soft, flat brush. We'll be using this to apply primer today. Um, and then this is the base coat brush. It's a little bigger. Put it over the back of my hand so you can see it. The base coat brush is a little bit bigger. Um, it is designed to lay down lots of paint in a broader area. 
Then there is the, this is what the starter brush looks like. It's smaller than the base coat brush, but it's larger than the fine detail brush. She's fine. I got the pencil away from her. Uh, um, and then this is the fine detail brush. It's a little bit smaller. Um, so those are the four brushes we're going to be using for this paint. It is the only four br brushes I'm going to use. Uh, absolutely. And if you exclamation point um, Panda U, you'll get a link to my website, which has all of the details on there too. And you can look up uh, pictures, but I will get a picture of these. Um, if one of the mods can put this on the to-do list, I will put a, put these up um, in the Discord later tonight. All right, so there's that. Um, so this is the mini, and then I'm gonna show you, grab the other one, where the fuck did I put it? I just had it, there it is, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this one. This is the other owl bear. This one is the one that is readily available from WizKids, easy to find pretty much everywhere. Um, so they're very similar, but they're also a little different. So no problem. So let me get this open. Let me see if I can get it open without destroying the backing. There we go, come on. I am very finicky because I am one of those people that will reuse all the things. Um, I try to salvage, ooh, salvage the backs of these and the plastic because I use this to glue rocks and stuff down to build terrain because it's a good hard cardboard. Uh, thank you guys so much for that hype, hype train. I greatly appreciate it. Y'all are great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, then this is the base for the owlbear. You just glue him down with some super glue right like that. I am not going to glue him down until I am ready to and all done with him. But you just glue it down with some super glue. Liquid super glue is the best to use as opposed to gel. Um, but stuff like this, I use this for like stained glass. You can draw on it with, um, you can draw on it with like a permanent marker and you can create stained glass effects. Um, so I try to save all of this stuff um, to use it for other builds because I don't like to waste packaging. When I don't have to waste things, I don't. It's also great for shipping minis. <laughs> if I have something that's extra fragile, I could put it in those to ship. So, all right, we are gonna get into actually, hey, Kimshi, welcome in. Thank you for the lurk. Uh, we're gonna get into actually cleaning the minis. Uh, this should still be, yeah, that's nice and warm, but without being too hot. So, hey, I timed it really well. Go me. Now, Washing minis. When you first get a mini, it never hurts to give it a good wash. Um, if it is not primed especially, there is an oil that is used as a release agent for the molds. Um, they do try to spray it off, but there's no guarantee that they get all of it. So it's just really, really good practice to wash it before you prime it. Oh, um, Moosey, thank you so much for your resub. I appreciate it. Welcome in. Um, so cleaning these is pretty easy. You just dunk it in nice, Warm, but not hot, room temperature is fine, water with some Dawn dish soap. Just a little bit of just regular ass Dawn dish soap. You can take any paintbrush that you have that's pretty soft. I'm just using one of the dry brush makeup brushes that I use. Um, you just get it a little wet, wet and you just brush it. Um, you just kind of go over the whole thing. You make sure you get in all the little cracks and crevices or slash crevasses, however you want to say it. Um, you just want to make sure that you get in all the places and you want to make sure that it gets nice and clean um, because you don't want to have any of that oil on here because the primer doesn't want to stick to oil and paint definitely won't stick to oil um, because we are using water-based acrylics and oil and water do not mix unless you have some sort of magical emulsion property and I don't have that for paint, so. But yeah, you just kind of go over it. You make sure you get everything in it. You dunk it again. And then you want to make sure that you rinse it really well. To rinse it, I usually just get a second cup. I'll sit it right here and then I will just pour room temperature slash cool water right over the top of it. Um, so I'm just gonna open up my water bottle and I'm just gonna pour, 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 pull it out, 
rinse some more. I'm gonna make sure I get all the things nice and clean. Just like that. So there we have one of the two minis washed. I have a brand new stack of palettes that I'm gonna move out of the way so I can get my paper towel to dry him off a little bit. Uh, with the resin, no, because when we talk temperature sensitivity in the resin, we're talking um, usually things get either far too hot or far too cold. Room temperature water is perfect for cleaning resin. Um, as a matter of fact, a lot of people use hot water as a release agent uh, for molds or for the uh, supports. So you can use just regular room temperature water is just fine to use. Um, you don't want to use anything that's ice cold and you don't want to use anything that's boiling. Um, but resin will hold up to temperature pretty well. Um, and typically resin, resin miniatures like the ones that we sell have already been washed by the time you get them. Because ours, uh, resin in order to cure it, you have to clean it with isopropyl alcohol. Like 91% isopropyl alcohol. Um, they come pre-washed. So, alright. This one is a primed mini. Again, it's the same kind of thing. I mean, you can kind of see in the water that it's a little cloudy. It's literally just that excess residue coming off of these. Um, so this one is, again, you're washing it the same way. Just a little bit of Dawn dish soap and water. And you just brush all around it. Make sure you wipe your butt. It is very important. Hi, pirate. And you just kind of go over it and you just make sure that all the in between all the feathers get nice and clean. And then again, I'm just going to dunk them one more time. Get off any of that last little bit. I'm going to remove the little piece of thread that's sitting on my desk. I'm going to set them in this water and I'm going to give them a little shower. And there he's washed. Both minis are now washed and cleaned. Um, I will say this one does not need to be primed. He's already been primed. They come, uh, the WizKids minis do come pre-primed as do many of the Reaper minis. Um, you do need to prime them. And this is a good practice to wash your minis beforehand regardless of um, what brand they are and regardless of material. Um, <laughs> I do have an ad quote if you would like to add the quote. Um, but that's all there is to it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to sit here and chit chat. Now that we have people showing up, I am going to go ahead and get Stream Raiders going. Um, I, I realized that a lot of people weren't able to be here right at the beginning because I started a little early, but it is after three o'clock. So we are going to get our boss battle going. I think. Oh, goodness me. That might be my oldest getting home. Um... I think this is a buff. Yes. Uh, this is a support buff. So what we're going to do. Oh, we have two of them. I'm going to put. I think I'm going to put us all up in this corner and try to get as many people up there as possible. I'm going to drop my panda right here. And then I'm going to say from a battle planning standpoint. If people want to be closer to the bottom buff or the middle buff, feel free. Um, but I don't think we're going to have enough people to get all of them. Uh, so try to stack up in here. I'm going to kind of drop it centered on here. Uh, it's going to be haste to try to get us in here as quick as possible because I think we just need to kill the boss. Um, I don't know because I haven't done this one yet. So we shall see. But there we go. And I am just sitting here holding onto this mini, letting it dry off. Um, you want to let your minis dry a little bit before you really jump into anything else. I'm just going to take this water and dump it in my uh, reservoir that I, or the mason jar that I use uh, for my um, paint water. So if you just give me a minute, apologies in advance for pouring water noises.
And you can use like any containers you want to wash them. I mean, you can literally just sit and wash them in your sink if you want. Um, and it'd be totally fine. I'm just doing what I can to, you know, wash on stream. Dry all of this up. Dry out this brush. Uh, we are gonna let them air dry. I was just, I was just dabbing off. <coughs> I was just dabbing off the excess water so that it doesn't drip all over my desk. I mean, Zero, you saw how neglected my brushes were. They were a mess yesterday. Right, let me get some tea. While we give these just a couple minutes to air dry. I'm gonna pour this and then I'm gonna go back to just chatting. We'll talk for a minute. Sorry, liquid pouring noises. There we go. But yeah, you can let them air dry. You can dab them dry with a paper towel. I would say don't scrub them. Just, you know, get the excess water off and then let them sit for a few minutes. Actually, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about, about my primer issues. So this is my, pri I bought a new thing of primer because I was running really low. It arrived shipped like this. Uh, there's a huge hole right here that is stopped up with dried paint. It stopped itself up in the packaging. They refunded it, um, but I had bought it on Amazon and it ended up being a third party seller even though it was shipped and sold by Amazon. So they just refunded it, but it's kind of a mess. So I don't know how good this primer is. It actually doesn't even, it feels like it might be dried all the way through. So, you know, probably just gonna use the new one. There we go. Oh, hi, that's my ring light. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna find out cause I'm gonna use the new bottle of primer. Cause I wanna show everyone, cause I don't wanna accidentally just like make a huge mess. This is primer. So it's designed to stick to things. I don't wanna have a huge mess that ends up getting stuck to something it shouldn't. So. These are looking like they are drying really well. They are going to be a lot of fun to paint. So I'm going to talk to everybody kind of about how to prep these guys, how to get stuff set up for them. Um, you know, and we're going to talk about like little idiosyncrasies that happen with minis, stuff to look for, stuff to watch out for. I'm making sure I got all of this rinsed off. And you can even take like a dry brush and just run it over everything. And the dry brush will help pick up some of that excess water too. For anything that got into like little cracks and stuff. Yes, exactly. We're trying to not make a leaky mess all over the place. I'm just, like I said, I'm just going over this with a nice, wide, dry brush um, just to help pick up any excess water so that we can actually get to priming this bad boy. Um, and we're going to prime this. This is the one, like if you got this kit, this is the one that needs to be primed. The one that's touching the ground with one of its claws does not. This comes pre-primed and ready to paint. Correct. This is not like the top popping off a paint bottle. This is literally the bottle cracked in shipping. And then I think it's pretty much dried out because I just tried to shake it and nothing moved. 
so I'm assuming the whole thing has dried out at this point. I haven't needed to use primer in a while because I've been using spray primer, which is my preferred way to prime. I much rather use a spray primer. Spray primer is essentially a rattle can like spray paint that's a special kind of primer. Um, the Army Painter sells it in most of their base colors. Uh, uniform gray is the one I use the most. Um, and then we also use a lot of black and white, um, but it is definitely something for people to be mindful of that it is an option if you have room to spray paint. If you do not have room to spray paint, brush on primer exists and is also a wonderful thing. What the hell is going on with this curl? Lay down, please. <sighs> Y'all, I cannot wait to get my hairs cut next week. I'm going back to it being like really, really short, not like to my skin short, but probably going back to where it's like an inch long as opposed to like the four inches long it is now. So, you know, stuff. Oh God, my mods are still trolling me, aren't they? I just saw something pop up in mod chat. <sighs> trolly, trolly, trolly. We all troll each other, it's glorious. We were trolling each other in Cypher's chat this morning. <laughs> for the moment um so yeah while these are drying if anybody's got questions ask them ask away actually i'm gonna go ahead and switch back to crafty and i'm gonna show you guys stuff while we're chatting uh, i am gonna move my camera back down now so that it's gonna be easier for people to see stuff. Um, so with minis, there's an important thing that a lot of people do and don't do. It's very mixed bag on who likes to do this and who doesn't, and that's removing the mold lines. Um, so mold lines are, these are injection molded um, and there's sometimes spots like this right here. You see that there's like a spur in the plastic right here. I'm actually gonna zoom this back in now. Um, I had my I had my camera focus in a little bit different spot just so that uh, everybody could see everything sitting flat on my desk. But now that I'm holding stuff up, I have to adjust it a little bit. We're gonna turn the light down just a hair. So. There's a little spot right here. That's where they injected all of the plastic. You can take an X-Acto knife and just run it across that. Always try to go away from yourself if you can. Sometimes you can't. So just be very careful. Like this one, there's actually like a gouge in it that I'm gonna, it, this whole edge is gonna get painted in black so I'm not too worried about it, but it's pretty rough. And you can just kind of scrape your knife over it and smooth that down a little bit. Um, and you can go over the entire piece. Like this piece, I know there's one that goes right here where you can see there's this little line right here. When you're dry brushing, all of that will get picked up by the brush. So it's always good practice if you're looking for a really polished mini to go through and get that scraped off. You see it less on 3D printed minis because they have supports that are basically like little pins as opposed to molds. Um, but you want to just, just go over your mini, check for little spots like that. Um, some minis will have a bunch, some won't have many at all. Um, the Gale Force 9 minis like this tend to be pretty good about not having them. Um, though his beak has a little bit of one, which that's going to annoy me, so... I'm just gonna go in here and just ever so gently scrape this little tiny piece off. But you wanna look for anything that looks like it shouldn't be there. In this case, like there's a little part on the tip of his beak that you can tell is over molded like it just kind of squeezed through the mold just a little bit. And you just want to make sure that you clean up anything that's like that and looks like it needs cleaning. 
Um, it's just really good practice. Uh, you don't have to. It's not a mandatory thing. Mini will still look good regardless. Um, but it's just something that a lot of people will go in and do just to make sure everything's nice and cleaned up. Now on the WizKids minis, you're gonna see way more mold lines. And a lot of that comes because they're already primed, so there's already some paint on here. Like you can see in here, there's like this really, really sharp line that goes around his shoulder. That's actually partially a mold line and partially like where the mini was pieced together. Um, you can get this wonderful stuff called green stuff and get in there and seal that up. I'm not going to because that's not something I am very good at yet. Um, but you can like see mold lines like under here. You can see there's a very distinct straight line right there. Like it's even with the, the exposure on my camera, you can see that there's that line right there. Um, if you can scrape it off, great. If you can't, totally fine. Um, I'm not gonna be able to get in there and get this just because the way that this mini is, it's gonna be really difficult. But you can get green stuff and fill in. You can get all sorts of things. Like there's a little loop right back here where his legs are. There's an entire lip right there that could be filled in. You can also try to get like hot water and push it in. Um, most people would prefer to use just green stuff to fill it in. You can fill it in with, um, another good trick is co a cotton ball and super glue. I'm just pressing this back into here and then I'm gonna try to feather it out with my X-Acto knife a little bit to try to mix it down into the fur a little better. But it's like a whole process. Oh, well, thank you for that, Pirate. I did not know that. And that is brutal. Um, yeah, no, mold lines are like the bane of my existence, but unfortunately because of my left hand issues and my ability to manipulate minis, it's really dangerous for me to try to remove them unless they're very easy to move. And yes, as Pirate said, that, that is specific to a very certain line of these. Honestly, he's not in bad shape. So most of the mold lines on him are things that I'm not going to be able to physically do. But there's a lot of minis that they're like the mold lines are on. Um, or here, I can actually show you on Molly because there's one that goes across the base. Um, typically, the mold lines are stuff that are like, you can see the line right there in between his feet. I wasn't concerned about, I've already cleaned him, um, but I wasn't concerned about the ones at the base because this is going to get based. So it's not that big of a deal. Yes. WizKids minis particularly can get like that. Here I can actually, I have my little warrior that I was showing everybody the other day. I can kind of show you on here because it's easier to see on these because mold lines on stuff that has a lot of fur is really difficult because you have to be so specific. But like, where was the big one on her? Like there's one that goes right down the this flat part right here. You can just take your knife and just run it down it and you'll get all of that off of there. Or like there's one right here on the side of the boot, you can just scrape it a little bit and it'll take it right off. Or the one that's right here on the front of her tabard, you can just push down and you just kind of run it across and it'll peel that little bit off. Just like that. So you want to look for that on most minis. Mold lines are a pain in the ass. They're a necessary evil, but they're also a pain in the ass. I actually find that they're easier to carve off metal minis than anything else.
Use the back of the knife. I've never heard that one. Thank you for the tip. But yes, the 3D minis, we've, we take care to remove everything here first. Briar is very, very particular about it. Hang on one second, I gotta meet my mom. Was checking to see if it was the oldest who got home, but I can't hear her, so. I was just gonna let her know that her dad's bringing home dinner. All right, let me check this thing. Let me go in here and get this last little bit of water out of that. I'm gonna give them a good shake just to make sure any extra water do droplets come off. And I'm gonna show you guys how to prime this bad boy. Um, let me get out my primer. Now, for this, I'm gonna give everybody the caveat. This is primer. It's designed to stick to plastic. Do not put this in a paint palette if it is your only paint palette because you're gonna ruin your palette. I usually will put it on a palette, but I'll put it on the palette up here on top of a paper towel. Yeah, it's a denser material, but it's also in some ways softer for me. Like it feels like it comes off much easier on metal minis. So you wanna shake your paint really well, especially with the primer. Um, and then you're going to Basically, give yourself a generous helping of it when it's primer. Again, don't put it in your palette if you want to save that palette because you will absolutely have issues. Now, again, I would never, never at this point in my painting career do what I am about to do. But I promised you I'm going to show you how to do everything with the supplies you got. This is my dry brush. This is what I'm gonna to use to prime it. And then I'm going to wash the hell out of this brush immediately. Oh my God, pirate. Pirate. Ugh. Anyway, priming a mini. You're gonna take your dry brush from these brushes or any good wide flat brush that you have gonna get a little bit of primer you don't want to go all the way to the base you want to just keep it in the front half of the bristles and you just start from the top and you just ever so gently just start brushing it on and you're gonna go all the way down with the same color you want to make sure that you get into everything as well as you can on the first pass um and you just kind of go over it and you just start brushing it into all the feathers. And again, you only have to do this if, if your brush is, or if your uh, mini is not primed. And if you got, if you're using this mini from Gale Force 9 that comes with the mini set, you do need to prime it. Luckily they use uh, the resin or plastic or whatever they use for their, um, their minis is a different color than the primer, which helps immensely in seeing where you need to put stuff. Um, also be sure to keep a cup of water nearby because you're gonna wanna wash your brush. Primer can dry very quickly. You're gonna wanna wash your brush as you go just to prevent it from getting caked with primer. And then you just grab a little bit more and you just keep going and you're gonna paint the entire thing from top to bottom in this primer. And it's okay if your brush is a little wet and the primer gets a little wet, it's just gonna help it move around a little bit. Um, primer doesn't necessarily have to be thin, but you can thin it. Um, and you just really, you're going to town with, with your primer and you're just gonna paint every last little bit of this mini. And it's gonna take a little bit. These are a little bit larger minis. Um, so it will take some time to do this. And you're just going to go, 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 go. But you want to make sure that you're getting in between all of the feathers. You're going to want to make sure that you're getting all the way in all of the little spots. 
Again, you're going to want to wash your brush a couple of times in between here because you don't want to, um, you don't want to get the primer drying in your brush because it will ruin your brush. It is primer. It is designed to stick to literally everything. I'm going to get some more primer out here because I know I need a bunch of it because this is a rather large mini. Um, happy random encounters. There you go. So now it sounds like we're talking about really bad Craigslist ads and it's like, you know, hmm. Who remembers Craigslist? But yeah, you want to make sure you get everything. Like, that's the big important part is that with the primer, your paint is not going to stick to this mini unless there is primer under that paint. So you want to make sure you get into literally all of it. <laughs> Monster, that is valid. That is so true. I found my, I have found every job I've ever had through Craigslist since I was like in my early 20s. Up until now, obviously, Twitch I found through a much different avenue. But yeah, we're just priming an owlbear. That's all we're doing right now. It's a lot of getting paint into places that seem like it's going to be really hard to reach. It's a lot of going in between here. It's a lot of paying attention. Uh, it's always better to end up needing two thin coats than one thick coat. So you're going to want a pretty thin coat. Um, and then if it, there's spots that are missing you could do another thin coat or you can go back in and just fill in those areas it's always better to err on the side of thin because a thick coat you can lose detail No problem. But yeah, you're not going to lose detail with the primer. If anything, primer will bring detail forward a lot of the time, especially like if you look at printed minis, primer can make everything pop and help you see where the details are better. Um, a lot of that depends on the color and the color of the mini and the color of the, the resin and all that kind of stuff. But And I'm sorry if you guys are hearing the noises from outside the garbage. It's garbage day, so. They rolling through. A good way to look at it is like clothing. If you wear a sweatshirt or a hoodie or a coat that's super thick and like two sizes too big for you, you lose any shape or figure you have. If you wear a couple of thin layers, people can see like what you actually look like. Haha, ha, me that has always worn clothes that are too big for me and the minute I put on something that fit me I look like I lost 50 more pounds and I'm like, wait, what? Uh, we are not dry brushing. This is um, 
or at least not yet. This is just applying the primer. You're using the dry brush brush because it's wide and flat and easy way. Yeah, exactly, Pyra. That's why I always wear stuff that's too big for me. Um, <laughs> is to hide the shape, but it's that same kind of concept. Or frying chicken, you always use a thin little bit of batter and then dust it with a thin bit of flour on top of it. You don't want to use one big old thick batter because you lose all of the chicken. Hi, Cypher, and yay! I am currently priming the one that comes with the, uh, the Monsters paint set from Army Painter. Just doing some brush on priming. Again, always remember to wipe your butt. Your little owlbear butt needs to be painted in primer too, y'all. Oh, did you? Please share in the Discord, because I would like to see that. Aw, Zero, thank you. I appreciate your resub. Eight whole months. So yeah, uh, right now, like I said, we're just priming. We've washed the minis, gotten them all cleaned off, made sure that there's none of that gross oily residue that can come with uh, the release process of mold injection, stuff like this. Um, and yeah, I am just ever so carefully adding primer to this a little bit at a time. Also, Cypher, while you're here, I, I, I purchased a large amount of these. I have a stack of these for you for next week. Oh. All palettes. I ordered 40 of them. They were super cheap to buy in bulk, so I bought a bunch because I know people need them. But yeah, we're just uh, adding primer. It takes a little bit of time to prime these. They are relatively large minis. Um, yeah, I literally got a pallet of pallets. It's basically what it was. It was like a 40 pack and they were like 10 cents a piece or something like that. I found like a really, really good like closeout deal. Yeah, you can get them at the dollar store. Totally easy to get them there. You can get them at Michael's. They're really cheap at Michael's. Um, if you don't have a palette, you can always use like a glass plate. I need to go look at the link. Ooh. Well, that's fancy. something I really want to learn. I really, really, really want to learn. But yeah, you want to make sure you get everything on the mini. You want to make sure you get its feet. You want to make sure you get the base. I would save the base for last. Because you need a place to hold it. And you want to make sure that, again, thin is better than thick when you're talking about the coat, the coats of paint here. Uh, you want to make sure that you 
put nice thin coats on. You want to make sure you go back and forth. You want to make sure you get in between all of the feathers, all up under. Obviously, if you ordered a mini that comes pre-primed, like the one from WizKids, this one, because we're going to be painting this one too. This doesn't need to be primed. It's already primed. You just got to wash it with a little warm soapy water um, and rinse it really well just to make sure that there's no residue on it. Uh, this one right here, this one does not come primed. This one is. This one is, if you ordered this one. This one comes primed. But the Gale Force 9 ones, these ones are not. Well, this one, this one is an exclusive with the paint kit. Also, I'm not that super busy this weekend. I have nothing going on on Sunday. If I got to come prime a mini for you, I can bring a, a rattle can out there. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I have going on this weekend is I'm running Saturday afternoon. I'm going to... Uh, my best friend's oldest graduation party because he's leaving for the Marines on Sunday. We found out yesterday he's leaving Sunday. He wasn't supposed to leave till September. So it's a good thing it wasn't sooner than that because I wouldn't have gotten to see him. But yeah, I'm just working my way down this mini. I'm trying to get into all these little areas. Priming these, definitely the, the most tedious part because the primer, you really have to make sure you get it everywhere. Um, once we start getting into like the actual painting, if you miss a spot, it's not that big of a deal because the wash will find it. And the wash will absolutely stick to the primer, so. I will never forget the first time I was priming this. Um, my husband got home, right, while I'm working on it. He's like, what are you up to? I'm like, uh, priming an owlbear's crotch. How about you? I'm like, I'm painting the bits on an owlbear. said that to their partner at least once. Stuff like in here where his hand is, this part right in here, definitely you want to pay really close attention because it's easy to miss spots because it's such a complicated little area to get into. So if you've got to go over it twice, go over it twice. I'm going to sit up and crack my back. I'm going to turn my mic back down a little bit because it's spiking and it shouldn't be. That should be better. Okay. But yeah, I love this mini. Painting this mini was a load of fun. I'm so looking forward to painting it next week. And I think it's going to be fun too, because it'll be a nice gauge of how my skills have improved from the first mini to this one.
I'm actually leaving most of this paint in its box and then just pulling out and replacing what I need as I need it. Cause I've only got a couple of bottles that I'm super low on right now. But definitely check out uh, exclamation point panda you head over to the site to check out all of the information um we are going to be doing a little bit different instead of doing a gallery this time i'm just going to have everybody just basically post post your work on social media with hashtag panda you three um post your project progress photos post your finished photos um and then for our first tea with panda on the 16th uh, i will go over whatever I can find on Instagram and Twitter with it. Yeah, it does. It makes having a really wide variety of paints definitely makes things way easier. Aw, Steven, hi! Thank you so much for your resub. Welcome in. How are you doing today? Ripley. Hang on, I hear a puppy getting into something. Ripper! Ripley! Ripper! Hang on, y'all. I'll be right back. I gotta go make sure that the puppy is not into something she shouldn't be. she was going to take a nap next to the couch and she was trying to make herself comfortable. I heard her feet against the wall because she's like literally wedged in a two foot space because she's ridiculous. <laughs> Silly pupper. Many lovely friends in here today. Always a good thing. I am on like constant high alert because puppy. <laughs> and again, do not put primer on your palette unless you would like the primer to stick to your palette because it's primer. It's what it's supposed to do is stick to plastic. <laughs> But yeah, so right now it's looking pretty good. I don't see a whole lot of spaces I've missed other than what I've got to finish on the base. Oh, I do got to get in that armpit right there. On this particular Benny, this under this arm really is the hardest part of it to paint. So how's everybody doing today? Everybody excited for all the painting and all the fun times? I'm st I got Molly sitting here staring at me and I am still terrified.
today's goal is really going to be getting the base colors on Molly or as much of the base colors as I can uh, before Black Dice Society. And I don't know how much of him I'm going to paint on stream. I may not do the coat on stream. I might do that off stream and then get good pictures of it and mail it to Zero and Catherine so that they will be wonderfully surprised, hopefully, well, hopefully wonderfully surprised, um, and then post the pictures after the fact, which I think is gonna be my plan. Oh, with an airbrush? I've never seen somebody prime with an airbrush. I know there's people that do it. I usually use like a rattle can, like spray paint can, but because of what we're doing for Panda U, I'm showing everybody how to do it with the brush on because not everybody has access to or space to be able to spray prime. Um, and the kits that I offered up for everybody is probably the best option I've found for getting started. All come with brush on primer for this mini. But I typically spray prime everything. And I actually think we might have an airbrush somewhere in the house. I don't know if it works or not. Benya, how are you? Of course, I am getting primer all over my fingers now, trying to get like this last little bit. I'm just kind of starting to look for anything that I might have missed, like the back of this little crown. And as the primer starts to dry, you'll start to see any missed spots much easier. To let this guy dry I'm gonna wash this brush out real quick and I'm going to go ahead and pull up the uh, the PDF uh, paint guide for this hi Lily I'm gonna wash some of this off my fingers because I got primer on my hands There we go. All right. Uh, let me pull up this PDF for everybody. I'm going to go ahead and get this. All right. This is directly, this is going to be directly from um, the Army Painter. This is the guide we're generally going to be using. Um, let me get my window capture up. Okay. So this is the... Here, there we go. So this is the 
official uh, painting series. Um, yeah, we'll, we can do Stream Raiders as soon as I'm done going over this. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is their official Owlbear. This is basically an intro. It comes with the stats. Um, this is a free guide. It is available if you exclamation point panda you, you'll get the page that I have links to this stuff for. It's also available at the rbpainter.com slash D and D. Um, these are the colors we're going to be using. So we have all of that information. Um, and then those are the four brushes. So there's the picture of it available for everybody who needs to know the shape of the brushes we're going to be using. Um, we're using two washes, no metallics, and these colors all together. Um, and then if you read through it, it's, it gives you how to prime it, how to paint it. Like it goes step by step. It gives you the video guide, um, how to care for your brushes. Um, and then it goes right into the actual painting. So there's three levels worth of painting. Um, after we go through all of this and we get to the end of level one, you will have a table ready miniature, something you could plunk down on a table pretty much anywhere and it will be a functional piece. Um, and then we will go into levels two and three where you add washes and dry brushing um, and highlights and all of that. Um, and then once you're done with that, you can go into all of the really fine detail work. Um, you add basing to it, which we're going to do next Thursday. Um, and you can just kind of keep going and then you get all the way to level three, which is when you start adding the really high end details to the base of the mini. Um, you start adding like tufts of grass and all of that kind of stuff. And I'm going to show everybody how to do all of this. All of this end stuff is definitely um, optional. It's just something that kind of takes your mini to the next level. Uh, it's not necessarily something super huge that you need to worry about, but I am going to go over how to do that with everybody. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much the gist of it. Uh, we are going to do all of this together, uh, step by step by step. And we will get um, we will get some very cool looking minis. This is basically when you get to the end with all the detail work, that's what you're gonna kind of get. Which obviously I have. I'll close this and show you this again. I followed this tutorial and this is what I got. When I all was said and done. So, I followed the video version of the tutorial. Absolutely, you can go off script with your owlbears. You guys are, you are all welcome to paint them however you want. Um, on my website, on that page, there are links to two other, um, two other owlbears. Uh, there is the uh, snowy owlbear variant and a fantasy variant. Um, and there's instructions for all of that. Uh, you could do a specter owlbear. You can do whatever y'all want. I am just going over the very basic like there's actual video tutorials out there. There's written tutorials out there. How to paint it just like this um, to give everybody a chance to learn. Obviously, if you guys have other ideas as to how you want your owlbears to look, I am 100% okay with it. Brendan, hello, welcome in. I miss your face. How are things? But yeah, so we're gonna be painting up our owlbears just like this. Very excited about it. I think we're all gonna have a really good time. We're gonna learn a lot. Um, you can stick to the script, you can go off script. I'm not gonna be worried either way, um, especially for the people who have some experience painting minis. Obviously, if you wanna do your own thing, go for it. Um, I am gonna be doing, uh, doing what I can my head itches. All right, Lemur, have a safe drive home. Thank you for being here. All right, let me check this thing. Let me double check that I have missed any spots. I did, I missed a couple of little ones. All right, 
I'm gonna get in here. I'm gonna touch up the little spot that I missed and then uh, we'll move on to Molly. I'm scared y'all. Where did I put my paintbrush down? There it is. All right, so I know I missed one little spot down here in the base. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of this and I'm gonna reach in here and get it. It's right down here on this rock in the back. I also missed in between the toes right here, did not get good coverage. So we're gonna go back in there. And it's much easier to see once uh, the mini is dry, the spots that you missed. Um, and it's always okay to like wait a day or two and come back to it and add a little bit more primer if you need to. Um, I will probably look at this again tomorrow and see more spots that I mixed and feel like I need to go back in and fix it. Um, but you wanna make sure that everything is covered. Um, sometimes you'll get some like air bubbles and stuff that'll pop and you'll realize you missed that spot too. Um, so you just kind of want to go over it. You want to be real careful. Again, you don't want to use thick coats. Um, thinner is always better because you're not going to, you won't lose detail that way. Um, and you, you just kind of baby it a little bit. And then once the primer is all done, you just set it aside and leave it be. And we will be ready to go, uh, to paint them on Tuesday. We'll start painting. We're going to block out all the major colors. I'm going to show everybody how to wash stuff. Um, and then... Once we're done washing all the things, that's going to kind of be homework for everybody. We'll start getting into the dry brushing and the extra detail work. Um, and then we'll go from there. And my phone just dinged at me and I don't know why because I thought it was on silent. Oops. Was that my phone? That might have been my iPad. Because I don't see my phone. But yeah, you want to make sure you wash your brushes really well. Um, if you're using especially for this because we are using a brush that we are going to need so i am very much just making sure there's no gunk in this brush i don't want any primer or anything in this brush i want this brush to be as clean as possible and ready to go for this week So I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna set these brushes aside to not get used because these are for this week. So I'm putting those away. We're gonna do Stream Raiders real quick before I forget. All right, y'all. 